This night reminds me of the time out at Canusi. Winston's home? Indeed, yes. The staff had taken leave due to flooding. Lara, back when she was a slip of a girl, was staying with Winston and his wife. It was her that contacted me, as a matter of fact. Some trouble out on one of the islands. Weird lights, manifestations, that sort of thing. I thought I might be able to help. It was on a hellish night like this when I arrived. Evening, Winston. And how would I be able to help? So, people have seen these apparitions out on the island. There is talk of little else in the village, Bram. I'm doing all I can to keep this gossip from Lara. I, you would be a wise man. It would be unwise for her curiosity to draw her to that place. And you have some idea of what it could be? To be frank with you, no. But as the devil finds work for idle hands, I've spoken with Father Finnegan and have a boat chartered for the crossing late on this very evening. Good Lord, Bram. You have not chosen the evening for it. I have my faith to protect me, Winston. Be careful. I fear on that island it's what you cannot see that will hurt you, Bram. Time to get to the bottom of this, old friend. Hello and welcome everyone to Let's Play Tomb Raider 5 Chronicles, this is Agarys 115 speaking and let me welcome you to the third chronicle of this game, Ireland. This first level is called the Gallows Tree, we are gonna find 17 items here, encounter 5 enemies but not really kill them, we are playing as gunless young Lara after all, we are gonna break 2 objects and we are gonna find 3 secrets. From now on it's 3 secrets per level till the very end of the game, right? Very straightforward. And we are halfway through with our secrets count because we are in the mid game. Now, first of all, let me apologize for taking this long with this particular video, especially after my incredible rate of producing the Russian and Italian videos. Simply, I'm starting a new business and it's draining a lot of time, has to be my number one priority if I'm to pay off mortgage, so... <laughs> but I'm still gonna really try and do my absolute damnedest best to at least release one video per week, and if I'll be able to, I'll be releasing even more, but again, I, I can't promise such a rate. First of all, let's talk about what happened story-wise. We are reminiscing about one of Lara's first adventures, again, this time young Lara, and I'm not entirely sure if this takes place before the Cambodia adventure with Von Croy or after. I think this is supposed to be a 16-year-old Lara, but I'm sure some of you in the comment section will correct me in case I'm wrong. Please do so, I'm curious to find out what the official timeline of this is. Uh, and we can already see a couple of backdrops. Now, let me talk about our inventory, because this is a point which makes me very angry. So, we have our Timex, again, useless gadget in the PC version, we have three small health packs, one large health pack, same as in Italy and Russia starting inventory. We are missing our pistols, which I do not hate. I like the fact that we need to be more cunning and actually find workarounds and not just shoot our way through problems. I enjoy passages like these. But, do you know what else is missing? Flares and binoculars. All these two things that can illuminate dark places and dark corridors and Irish levels are very dark, especially so on the PS1 version of the game. So basically this means that all the pickups we will encounter are all going to be about small and large health packs and uh, golden roses. That's it. It really destroys some of the suspense. Of course there are some key items as well, but that's it. No ammo pickups and not even flares. Now I'm not entirely sure how the next and the third level will fare in that regard, but there are no flares to be picked up 
in the first Gallows Tree level, nor do we start with any in our inventory screen. Why do devs of Tomb Raider 5 hate flares so much? I truly do not understand. But enough talking, let's see what's up ahead. First of all, uh, yeah, a couple of abandoned huts. This used to be a village, an inhabited island, but it's been abandoned since. And it seems that in uh, Winston's village of Conocy, which, by the way, it's a made-up village. It doesn't exist. I did at least that kind of research. I'm not sure exactly if it's on the coast of Wales and we are on the main isle of Ireland, but I think the village is actually on Ireland and this is a small island off the coast of the island of Ireland. Oh my god, that was a tongue twister. So, what you see in the distance is a small ruined chapel. We want to reach that chapel. That is the level exit. We are going to reach it from the other side by crossing a wooden bridge in this chasm. That's going to be the final thing we do in this level, but we have so many adventures to go through before that. Now, sorry for talking through the loud music, but just want to explain what we are after here. We need to cross this chasm and continue, find the first secret cave, and also pick up two small health packs at the very bottom of the chasm. From the bottom of the chasm, we'll be able to climb this tunnel that was behind us all along, which is why I'm not exploring it and showing it to you now, because we'll be using it to come back. So first of all, let's make an awesome jump. My god, Larry, you're, what, 16 years old and you can do this? This is incredible. Uh, okay, so in that corner over there, which I would show you, zoom in and illuminate if we had binoculars, for some reason we don't, you can see small health pack, and then one is behind the stone pillar all the way over there. Now the traversal in here is actually something I don't like, and it's the kind of beginning of the level that coming from the previous one, when I see a chasm like this, I'm just like, yeah, you know what, I'm good for the day, I'm gonna take a break. You know, those kinds of uh, level starts which immediately put annoying obstacles in your way and kind of, I guess, encourage you to take a break? Yeah, that's how I feel about it. Oh, by the way, Skybox, how awesome is it? Uh, let me actually do a quick comparison. Oh, and let's disable the cutscene skipper so I don't accidentally skip anything. This is what they look like on the PC release. See, they're just these hazy, blurry images, and you know what? I think this is actually far... Okay, never mind, I take that back. The moment that lightning hits, it looks terrible. Yeah, let's go back to the PS1 ones. Yep, no PC release, you're not gonna get this point. Okay, that looks way much better when the lightning strikes, see? Okay, so more holes in the sky, very atmospheric. It actually reminds me of the night sky from the Harry Potter and Chamber of Secrets PC release when you're wandering Hogwarts grounds uh, at night and the beautiful soundtrack from Jeremy Soul plays. That's exactly what the Irish sky in Tomb Raider 5 reminds me of, it's amazing. Now you can already see it, there's a first golden rose. This is the trickiest secret to find if you're... <gasps> oh, bats! Can we avoid them via somersaulting? Uh, somewhat. By the way, do not turn when you're crouched. It's just gonna increase Lara's overall hitbox and the, the bats incurring more damage on you, okay? But somersaulting actually seems to work fine. So, uh, first golden rose, and this time the secret comes with a reward! Woohoo! Finally, they learned their lesson after the Russian levels. So, we are at 19, and if you look here, you will see one out of three. It's as simple as that. Now, essentially, what we need to do is get down. And without injuring ourselves, how hard can it be? I had no idea, Lara, you can grab it. What? That is awesome. Oh, now you cannot. Okay, that was a weird glitch, let's say. Oh, no. My entire playthrough is now tainted. It is no longer glitchless. Ah, that's fine. We glitched together while I had your health pack in Palace Midas. So, small health pack behind the stone pillar I talked about. And above us is a monkey swingable wooden bridge. However, we'll be monkey swinging on the underside of that bridge. We'll be using the bridge to cross the chasm at the very end of the level, uh, leading us to the ruined chapel I, sh I showed you at the beginning. My god, this turn is awkward. Okay. So there is a small health pack in the corner over there. This is another awkward and annoying part. We need to... We're not gonna reach it via one jump, we need to make two jumps. Yeah, and part of this stone tile is actually slippery, but it's difficult to tell the slippery part from the non-slippery one. And if you jump here... Thank you for your cooperation, Lara. You go get yourself another small health pack. Again, since there are no guns to be used in these three levels, the game just throws you health packs left and right. It really doesn't know what else to give you, but I have a suggestion. Some flares, maybe? 
No. Okay, I'm still trying to keep an open mind as to the second and third level. Maybe we are gonna get our hands on some flares there, but I wouldn't hold my breath. And yeah, this right here is the tunnel that was behind us at the very beginning. Again, it doesn't really explain how Lara got here from the boat, but whatever. She followed in the FMV cutscene Father Dunstan through the secret passage. I actually have a hard time imagining what horror Winston must go through when Lara suddenly disappears from the house. Imagine her parents calling him on a telephone and he having to lie, yeah, everything is fine, Miss Croft is taking her nap, whereas he's sweating because he's totally lying to her parents and she has disappeared. And I think Winston knows Lara and he knows exactly where she is, but it's not like he can just call Father Dunstan to check. Naughty Naughty Lara. Anyway, um, let's just, uh, yeah. Ah, there you can see the panels of the wooden bridge they will be crossing as the very final thing in this level and reach the ruined chapel. It's actually where Father Dunstan will send us once we encounter him, but that's gonna take a while. Before Father Dunstan, we are gonna encounter a way more interesting NPC. Oh my god, I can't wait. Although, some of the events happening in the Irish levels here, they have very severe implications for the whole Tomb Raider universe, at least as far as core era games are concerned, which some of them I don't really agree with, but I guess this they're so mystical and mysterious that they can be interpreted in a billion sorts of ways. Anyway, we are under the wooden bridge and we get to Monkey Swing to reach the cavern on the other side. I love levels that loop in on themselves, so at least that's one thing I appreciate about this chasm. Okay, this will be slippery, but don't be afraid. No danger here. Before you slide on the left, make a note of the large health pack over here. Again, I believe we are gonna do just fine without using them here. If we did so in the previous levels, I doubt we'll have a need in this one, but, you know, let's keep our mind open to all sorts of things that can go wrong. And now, listen very carefully to the following cutscene. Spirit, come closer, for you are safe, while I am hung like so much butcher's meat. Who are you? Who? Mm, for it is more like what? Condemned to wander between the kingdoms of man and that of the elementals. <laughs> but I must be swift in my request. <laughs> For they watch and wait to once more draw me back into the darkness. Request? My heart, girl. They have hidden my petrified heart in the roots of this, the world tree, down under the watchful gaze of the dragon Nidhogg. Find this, my child and return it to its rightful resting place. <laughs> and you shall be rewarded. And why on earth should I trust you? Not on earth, girl. In between. <laughs> My soul is gone. And how it fares, nobody knows. And nobody cares. <laughs> okay, again, the implications for something like this are absolutely insane. Oh, and by the way, to everyone younger in my audience, uh, whenever you go to Ireland and a hanging corpse starts offering you gifts, just stay away. That's a well-solicited advice. Okay, probably applies to us adults as well. Now, something rolled out of the barrel and I made a very stupid mistake because I stepped on this tile. If we were to stay away from that barrel, we would never summon whatever the hell this little cute baby is. I mean, 
I don't know how to refer to these guys. Um, I think according to Irish folklore, they could be called... Uh, apparently, misbehaving children were kidnapped by demons and replaced by these things or something along those lines. Whatever adults use to terrify kids and make them fall in line, I guess. Uh, okay, this little baby doesn't seem to be able to... Oh, never mind. It's very crafty. Okay, it's adorable. And it's just gonna chase you. It's very similar to the wild boars in Cambodia, except there we had Von Croy with his huge knife. Uh, phrasing. And here we have... Uh, Nothing, exactly. So this is fun, yeah. Now, a uh, couple of things. This is going to be sort of a central hub of the level called the Gallows Tree. This is it. And the Hangman even summoned from the elemental plane, whatever that is, some kind of... Hopefully not afterlife. I don't know. Again, the implications for the Tomb Raider universe are very huge. And I'm not sure what the devs were trying to do. It's like a whole different genre of the game. Anyway... This sad thing is supposed to be the tree of life, and in its root supposed to be a petrified heart, which we need to give back to him. Now we are going to do all of that. The confusing thing is that when we come back here, the hanged man is not here. We will find him. We'll have to put the heart somewhere else completely, and that's communicated very poorly. Now, our objective is oh, mind the footsteps. Ah, that's so cool. Thank you, Tomb Five Patch. Our objective is to jump into the well, but because of the wooden uh, barricade around it, we need to take it from up top and jump from all the way there. Again, I would use Binox if we had any. So instead, let's first get our hands on the second secret, which is incredibly straightforward. Maybe shimmy to the left a bit and just hold the jump key and Lara will do the rest. I also did a mid-air roll because I'm just so badass. And there we go, second secret on this stone pillar. Very easy to get and yeah, kind of difficult to miss. Now there is a ruined tower which leads to sort of a ruined monastery. Um, we can go there now and I can show you around, but we would spend a lot of time instead. I'm gonna get our hands on an important key item, an absolute treasure, which we need first. This crawl space is also a way back, okay? So don't be confused. And you know what? Let me do something cool. Ha! I'm not sure that saved us any time, but I just didn't want to do a boring standing jump, jump and grab. Now immediately let go when you reach this tile. And crouch. There they are. Second flock of bats. So far they're doing a terrible job, but let's somersault. But let's not turn. Again, that just increases Lara's overall hitbox. Okay, somersaulting helped. A bit. That's something, I guess. And now we are, we are gonna get high enough to jump into the well, okay? And of course I'm gonna do a swan dive. And there is gonna be a specific camera angle here, but if you press the roll key, whatever you have it mapped to, I have it to the end key on my keyboard, whilst swan diving, Lara will do mid-air roll. This is something I demonstrated back in my uh, Tomb Raider 2 tutorial video, and it's no different here. But again, camera angle, See, Lara did a somersault, but we've seen it, her from a distance. Now, we are inside the well in underwater tunnels. There are a couple of dead ends, like the one on the left. Let's ignore that. But I'm still going to show you all the dead ends as well, just like in Russia's The Base Third Secret, because that's what I do. Now, there is another dead end over here, but if we keep to the right all, at all times, we will reach a third dead end. Yay! This is so suggestive, yet... Oh, it's just evil, I think. Okay, let's continue onward. Patience is a virtue, or some stuff like that. And now, I'm gonna show you yet another side tunnel. Now, this is getting confusing, right? Don't worry, it's all connected. All the conspiracies, everything, all the lies the government tells you, it's all connected. Oh my god, no, seriously. This is gonna be, again, yet another way back from a derelict hut. But we cannot use it to climb up into it, which is a shame, because right there is a key item we want. Oh boy, so um, here you can do something really smart and that is to climb this ledge over here immediately and be about your business. But that would be boring, wouldn't it? Instead, I'm gonna show you that if you go on that side over there, you are gonna summon a swarm of rats. Now, if you remember, there they are. Swarms of rats. <laughs> in the second level of Italy, in Trajan's markets where they appear, we've noticed they can swim upon the water, water surface. So if you are underwater, you are safe. You can also very quickly outswim them, that's not a problem. However, they become a problem once we get on solid ground. So we need to be on the move constantly. Make a standing jump here and let's get to the very edge and make 
Oh my god, they're fast. Let's make another standing jump here. Not a running jump because Lara would over jump and fall. And they can apparently make it across walls and slippery surfaces. Those annoying buggers. Woo, nice, very elegant. Are they gonna follow us here? You guys could disperse already. Oh my god, there's one still. Let's somersault. Ah! Okay, surely we must be safe now, right? For that ordeal, you get your hands on a large health pack and in the chest drawer over here. By the way, I love the textures on this thing. Very old, very vintage. You get... Yeah, I was promising a treasure and you get a rubber tube. No, it's not a used up condom. It is a rubber tube. Um, maybe something to do with this ancient bike from... 19th century, I imagine? I truly do not know. Great bit of detail, however. Look at the cushion on the seat. <laughs> I don't know why I like this bike so much. Anyway, the rest of the house is completely derelict, abandoned, there's nothing here. And if you remember, this tunnel over here takes us back to the water tunnels, yay! So we can get out again like this. Can we actually climb here directly? We should be able to. This is the ideal height for Lara to hold on to. Perfect and not slippery. Now, instead, what we need to do now is jump into the other pool of water. Oh, mind the wheel card in the distance. It actually makes cool sound effects. <laughs> anyway, in this other pool of water, there are gonna be more rats, which you can avoid triggering, but where's the fun in that? <laughs> oh, okay. I heard them. I did not see them. Oh, okay, there you go. There you are, you little guys. Okay, I kind of want to get close to the card just to show you... I guess the sound effect it makes. I don't know why I'm so fixated on that. There we go. The wheel keeps spinning, actually. And makes a little sound, which I'm not sure you can hear over the rats. Anyway. Whoa! Okay, that was a close call. Anyway, if we go here, we are gonna enter a crawl space. A very short one, don't worry. And this is where we are. Hooray! Okay, and there's... Oh, come on, you rat. Get lost. We have imp to deal with now, and by deal with I mean ignore completely. Anyway, the hangman is not back, and he's not gonna be back here ever again, which is a bit disappointing. Anyway, we are gonna at least hear from him again. Instead, let's go to the old ruined monastery, somersault. Unfortunately, the little guy is so little he can fit in here. He can just keep his normal running slash walking distance. He should be there. Oh my god. Oh my god. Okay, okay. That was actually really adorable. Oh, I love the backdrops. Look at the door opening, closing. That's so cool. Oh, and atmospheric. Okay. So there is a collapsed dead-end tunnel over here where we will find another treasure, which is a broken off tip of a pitchfork. Yes, exactly. We really are collecting junk in Ireland. But you know what? This is young Lara, and she's going to use child's imagination to create a weapon of mass distraction. Let me demonstrate. By the way, the little imp, the little guy cannot get us here. Um, again, not sure if imp is the correct word to call them, but that's what I'm gonna refer to these cute babies. Okay, so inside is a chain attached to a stone block that is almost loose, but not quite. We need to help it along to break down a couple of church bells and open up a passage. I pr did promise you weapon of mass destruction. No. Now, pitchfork does nothing, no. rubber tube does nothing, but if you combine them, you will create... A I don't know why it's called a catapult, it's a slingshot, it's not a catapult. But you know what, maybe in Lara's child imagination this is a catapult. Let, let's roll with that. And you can basically summon it even here. But if you do, Lara's gonna end up standing on that side over here. You know what, let me show you. Weapon of mass destruction indeed. Lara, this is just the beginning of all the things you'll pull off. <laughs> now this was treated entirely in the cutscene, right? This wasn't just a camera flyby, so I'm not counting this as a breakable object or anything like that. But, important thing, why did we do it? Not just to gain passage, but to get an iron clapper from the bell on the left. See, the one on the right actually still has it attached inside, but it broke off the one on the left. Now. Important thing to note here, if you want to see an absolutely hilarious cutscene at the very end of the level, do not pick it up 
beat the level and see what happens. Then you'll be given an opportunity to come back here and pick it up, okay? Instead, I'm gonna save us some time. I have already recorded the cutscene and I'm gonna show it to you. Let's pick it up now. So, it is called a Iron Clapper. Now, why does this bloody thing have any impact on the final level and cutscene? It will make a bit more sense later on. Let's now descend into the ruined monastery via an old ancient tunnel and we'll emerge on the other side in one of the most atmospheric areas I have seen in a Tomb Raider game. There are gonna be a series, I think, four different crypts inside Barrow Hills. I don't know why, I just love this place so much. Now, pick up the torch over here, it's gonna be very important to get the petrified heart. And no, you cannot open those crypts like you could the uh, sarcophaguses or sarcophagi in Tomb Raider 4, okay? Oh, the music is so creepy, I love it! Look at this place, just tombs and tombs and tombs. Maybe these are the first tombs Lara raided, who knows? Just crypts. Again, we cannot open them, but each one of these things is gonna summon, you guessed it, an imp. Oh, oh that's right, a small health pack. I almost forgot about you, so let's drop it in a way that will help us pick it up later. Hopefully we didn't soft lock ourselves off the level. Ah, there you are on the ground. And again, interesting thing, the l moment Lara picks it up, it already seems to be burning hot without the actual fire particle effect. It reminds me in the, of the torches in Gothic 1. <laughs> there are actually two kinds of torches. Ones are just unsinged, completely new, and the other already pre-singed. When you use them and put them off, they all become the same object. Sorry, this must be very confusing if you haven't played that game. Anyway, uh, for those of you who know what I'm talking about, kudos for you to get that reference. Finally, a source of fire. Now, if you do not light up the flare here, you are gonna get another chance, but the sooner the better. And no, I do not want to now revisit all the previous uh, burial barrow hills with the torch, because there really is nothing inside. And there should be another one around the corner, and again, let me just show you that it is indeed completely empty. But you know what, on the PC version it's fine to see even without the torch. So, we need to descend into that deep pit. Thankfully, there is a ladder to help us along. Behind this door is an entrance onto the wooden bridge, which will take us to the next level, which we've seen from the beginning uh, chasm. To open it, we need to enter the petrified heart here. Yeah, this is where we give the hangman the petrified heart, by putting it into this receptacle. For some reason, I guess they just didn't want to create another cutscene. I, I do not understand this. Yeah, so... It is all rather underwhelming after what was set up next to the gallows tree cutscene. Anyway, let's drop it and go down, down, down. You do take some falling damage unless you do this. Okay, and now I'm also gonna show you the third and final secret. Mind, mind you, there are breakaway tiles, even though they look a bit different in Tomb Raider 5. They each seem to be broken off into 16 smaller squares or something old like that. Now. You can basically just run across this bit, and if you do, throw the flare and crouch! Because you cannot crouch with a flare, okay? So just be ready to do this because of yet another annoying flock of bats. Yes, guys, I get it. You are annoying. Ah, uh, where is Bernard when you need him? I'm busy! Now, uh, let's re-pick up our torch and throw it into the pit. I'll explain why. There is a third secret, and we are totally getting our hands on it. Uh, this path just leads around the pit, so you can avoid it completely, and this torch here is another opportunity to light the torch you're carrying, in case you... Oh my god, haven't done so already. Let's get on the lower ground. Okay, okay, and just be motionless. I... Oh no, this is not the final flock of bats. God damn it, there is at least one more. Oh, these things are so annoying. Anyway, the worst thing is, they do not even count as kills. Oh my god. Okay, let's pick up our torch. Again, if you walk among these... Actually, these are ripped right out of Tomb Raider 4's Burial Chambers level. Just an interesting note, they don't really fit here. Anyway, you know what? Actually, we can leave the torch here. We cannot crawl with it. Now, it doesn't really matter where you stand. Uh, whenever you go into crouch and move forward, you are going to take some damage. Just, just a tiny bit. And unfortunately, somersaulting like this does not help you avoid the damage. But lo and behold... Our third secret, hooray! So this means we are at 21 now, ever closer to that sweet 36th. And again, like the first secret, comes with an actual in-game reward. Now this is a revolutionary idea, really. Okay, just one movement. Okay, Lara, ah, oh, 
When standing up, she takes damage. Gosh darn it, that's a shame. Okay, let's re-pick up our torch and walk carefully out of here. No flocks of bats for the foreseeable future. And let's get our hands on that petrified heart. Now, we are on the other side of the pit now, but again, I haven't technically shown you where this passage goes, so let me just fix that real quick. Yeah, see, we are on the other side. I'm not going to make a running grabbing jump because we are carrying a torch, although... Hold on a sec, I just noticed something, and maybe it's gonna get me killed, but I... Can we monkey swing? Huh. Ladies and gentlemen, our first Tomb Raider 5 death. And there go my hopes, my dreams, my aspirations of having a deathless run. <laughs> okay. Oh my goodness. I will see you guys back at this spot. Okay, here we are. Back. Smarter, more wizened and grizzled Tomb Raiders. Let's just ignore the texture up above there, okay? I have actually in the meantime tested this in my PS1 version by a standing jump. Lara does not grab these. These are not handholds. My goodness gracious, I completely fell for that. Lara, you're looking at that pit as if you had premonition, or as if maybe in some parallel universe this is where you died. Do not worry, let's not dwell on that. You know what, on one hand I'm really sad that there isn't some unique Pike's Impale animation since Tomb Raider 4 that was present in Tomb Raider 2 and 3. However, oh actually even for Tomb Raider 1. However, when it comes to, you know, young Lara, I'm glad we didn't see that kind of gruesome death. You know, it's just, she's so innocent and yeah, I'm, I'm happy we did not see that with her. Just an instant death on the floor. Okay, so what to do next? Remember I, I was our, <coughs> sorry, our fire sprinkler trick back in Tomb Raider 4? Well, this is basically the same ordeal. These are the roots of the world tree or tree of life, however the hangman called it, and inside its roots is the petrified heart. Yep, it is red like a heart, but you can see it has this stony texture. And the roots above are burnt. Now, hmm, should I consider this a breakable object? I mean, we did burn through it. You know what? That's correct. I am gonna count this as a breakable object. Totally am since we also counted the burned ropes in Tomb Raider 4. Now, let me drop the torch and immediately press Control key, because if you throw the torch and take a while, it will bounce back to this very spot. Actually, let me show you. And Lara will prioritize picking it up every single time, okay? So you just need to be quick in your input. yet that doesn't burn at its touch. What was in the hole? In the... Never mind that. What on earth are you doing here? No, don't bother. We'll get onto that later. Right now, we need to get you out to somewhere safe until the morning. That's assuming you'll stay in one place, young lady. Nothing with demons, right? Well, I can't promise anything in this godforsaken place. I light the way and go on ahead to clear out any unwelcome guests. Now, once you're out, head to the chapel over the bridge. I'll meet you there. I'm forgetting me manners. Don't speak to strange things. And if there's anything around, and trusting the skills in this area, there shouldn't be. Iron girl, use iron to repel them. See you up top. Keep your wits about you. I love that the demon's voice was basically Admiral Yarofel. <laughs> I could hear that fake Russian accent all the way here. Okay, first of all, where Father uh, Father Patrick Dunstan went, 
for a while I forgot his name, he left a small health bank for Lara. So let's pick that up and let me maybe take a closer look at that hole. Lara left her torch here during the cutscene for whatever reason. By the way, again the implications for the Tomb Raider universe. There is going to be a doomsday, there are demons. I mean, what the hell is going on in this game? Uh, okay, you can roughly see how deep it is. It is death from falling and we would break Lara's neck. The reason I dropped the torch there is that we basically don't need it anymore, right? Now I love how the priest was completely undisturbed by the fact that Lara is here and he's like, ah, just make it to the chapel across the wooden bridge. That's the wooden bridge I talked about at the beginning of the level, right? Now, uh, let's go back with our prize, the petrified heart. These tunnels, yet another way back in this level, if you're wondering what this tunnel over here is. Yeah, let's watch out for the imp, even though he seems to be far, far away. And I feel cheated, there is no hanged man. Now the irony is that the tunnels over here are not really a shortcut, because if we were to go over the spike pit where I died previously, we would be where we need to go much sooner. But I really wanted to show you where the corridor leads, at least. Now, let me just make sure we do have three secrets. Wonderful, so there's not much else for us. Well, we have an army of health packs by now. We have the iron clapper. Again, if you do not have it, I'll show you where to find it. But you will get to see a really funny cutscene. And we have the petrified heart. The hangman is nowhere to be seen, but remember the stone receptacle I talked to you about? Well, that's where we need to go. Again, this is very confusing if you don't know what to do. The game does a very poor job of communicating it. And the irony that Father Dunstan said, you know, don't talk to anything, go across the wooden bridge to the chapel, the one that I showed you at the beginning of the level, well, in order to do that, we actually need to give the petrified heart to the hanged man. So, contradicting yourself there, father. Or you just are not particularly knowledgeable on this level design. Anyway, I love the character of the priest. He is so cool, so chill, so confident in what he's doing. It's great stuff. Okay, now the moment we put it here, oh boy, we're here a laughter. <laughs> A very cheap sound at that. It sounds like something from a haunted house from a particularly small speaker being played behind the walls. Anyway, four little babies will appear. The imps or however to call them. Oh my god, they're just so adorable. Okay. <laughs> so these imps, uh, together being combined to five, all together in the level, uh, these imps, again, we cannot dispatch. All we can do is avoid them and I'm doing a rather poor job of that right now. See, each one of these little guys came out of a single crypt. Now, depending on if you have or do not have the Iron Clapper in your inventory, a different cutscene is gonna play out at the very end. In case you do not have it, you're gonna watch the most amazing cutscene of the Tomb Raider franchise and then you're gonna be thrown back. Okay? If you do have it, you'll only see the cutscene play out once and you'll be able to continue. But first, let me show you the bad cutscene. Did I say bad cutscene? I mean, <laughs> they literally just jumped her and she was being tickled to death. By the way, the imps you could see in the cutscene jumping at Lara, those are not the same ones as are chasing us here. Those have been sort of uh, created by the game specifically for the cutscene. You could see actually two of these guys stand in the distance in the doorway and just arguing or bickering or something like that, but not jumping at Lara. And you should see something similar like that in the cutscene in case you do have the Iron Clapper. Again, in case you don't, just make sure to go to where you emerge in this Barrow Hills area and go back to the ruined church where we used our slingshot, okay? And you'll find it lying on the ground. Then, and then once you pick it up, you can continue.
And again, the same four imps that spawned just for the purpose of the cutscene disappeared in a poof of smoke. It was almost like Lara unsummoned them, right? But it, actually, if you do go back, you, you know, you could see these two guys just standing in the doorway now being somehow stuck in one another and bickering. Uh, you will see all four imps back here. There should be another pair over here, right? So again, those that disappeared appeared specifically for the cutscene and Lara using her iron clapper like that in a cutscene I'm not even considering them as enemies present in the level nor as kills or anything like that, okay? So, what did we discover? Well, an access to the wooden bridge Father Dunstan told us about. Now, is it left or right? Okay, it's left. Awesome. And now we should get our hands on the final pickup of the level. And actually, I really like what the level exit looks like here. I'll explain later. Lara, please cooperate. Thank you so much. This is a very mossy tunnel. Imagine that smell. Anywho. So, apparently demons are weak to iron. I never heard about that in any kind of mythology. I mean, iron is such a common metal. I guess this rumor was created back when people came up with iron by combining... Wait, no, not by combining anything, you can just mine iron, I, I I, don't know. Anyway, I guess iron was the hot shit at the time and this is what they came up with. Now, we are on the bridge that's, well, I mean it's a stone bridge that has wooden side panels, but we are where the priest sent us. Uh, yeah, they're glitching somewhat, seems there are double textures here. Anyway, we're now crossing the chasm where we were at the beginning of the level, but in an area we couldn't get to before, now mind the bats. You know what, whilst we're waiting... Let's pick up the large health pack. Well, they're doing a terrible job of dealing damage to us so far. We didn't even somersault. Damn it! You had to take it by, didn't you? Well, maybe Lara is delicious. Who am I to judge? Okay, so that's it. We have a final item. Let's climb all the way up. Again, just tunnels, tunnels, tunnels. And now we find ourselves on the very final tile. I don't think we are allowed to make another. Well. Yes, we can still be on the tile we are on, but if we cross the threshold of this tile ahead of us, it's the level exit. And this is the ruined chapel we've seen from the very beginning of the level behind that hill. You can see the side of the ruined abandoned hut over there. So this is where Father Patrick Dunstan sent us to, and apparently we are supposed to be safe here. Well, oh boy, not entirely. I mean, we wouldn't have a next level to play through if things were safe and boring and Lara would just be waiting. Oh my god, look at those stars in the night sky. That is... Okay, that is gorgeous. Oh man, I love these PS1 skyboxes so much. So, my friends, this was the Gallows Tree. We have found all 17 items. We encountered five enemies but didn't kill any of them. And I'll expect something like this also in the next two levels. Uh, we have broken two breakaway tiles and burnt roots of a tree, so I'm gonna count that as three breakable objects to be consistent with the rules we set out in Tomb Raider 4. And finally, we have found its three secrets. Again, as I said at the beginning, it's three secrets per level from now on till the end of the game. We have two more levels in the Irish Chronicle and three more levels in the New York Chronicle. Ooh, New York, you're gonna put out Tomb Raiding skills to test, but later about that. So, thank you so much, guys, for being patient. I hope you enjoyed the video. You have a labyrinth to look forward to next time.